7.4 is finding the area between two curves. So that's on pages 382 to 384 in your text. Our curriculum outcome to demonstrate understanding of indefinite and definite integration by site and by substitution as used in the fundamental theorem of calculus. And our lesson objectives, number one, to learn how to determine which function lies above another function. Two, to recall how to find out where two functions intersect. And three, to be able to find the area between two curves. So if you have two functions and you're trying to find the area between them, then you would need to know which function lies above the other. So for example, if this is our function here of f of x, we know if we pick a point A and a point B, call that our interval, and we're, if we find the integral of this function, then we're finding the area underneath f of x. But if we're trying to find the area between f of x and say another function like g of x, then we need to find out what f of x is so we can subtract g of x from it. So once this has been determined, you can find the area between them using integrals. And that means that we take the function that's above f of x, we subtract the function that's below g of x, and then we take the integral of it. And where f of x are two continuous functions, and f of x lies above g of x on the interval a to b. So it says find the area of the region bounded by f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 3, g of x equals negative 1 minus x squared, and the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So we need to draw a little sketch here to help us out. So first off, we need to know what these shapes are, and they're both parabolas. x squared minus 2x plus 3 doesn't have any x-intercepts. Um, when I check it out with the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, um, b squared would be 4 minus 4 times 1 times 3. So I get a negative number here. I get negative 8. So it means that um, underneath the square root sign, if we were to use a quadratic formula, there would be a negative 8, and we know that can't be true. So we've got a parabola that opens up, doesn't uh, touch the x-axis. We know here we've got a parabola that opens down, and it also doesn't touch the x-axis. So we've actually determined f of x and g of x right here and right here. So now we know which function lies above the other one. And now we're looking for also the from the line x equals negative 1 to all the way to x equals 2. So we're looking for this area in here. So um, in order to do that, now we just need to find the integral. And we know that the f of x function lies on top. So when finding the integral, we have our two x values from 2 to negative 1 of f of x, which is x squared minus 2x plus 3 minus negative 1 minus x squared dx. When we combine like terms, we get x squared plus another x squared, that's 2x squared. We get negative 2x, and we get positive 3 plus 1, which is positive 4 dx. Now we can take the integral of this thing, so it'll be 2 thirds x cubed uh, minus x squared plus 4x, and that we're going to evaluate from 2 to negative 1. So now you have to remember, we just plug in a 2, and we subtract whatever we get when we plug in a 1. So we get 2 thirds, 2 cubed, minus 2 squared, plus 4 times 2, minus, the whole thing in brackets would be 2 thirds times negative 1 cubed, minus negative 1 squared, plus 4 times negative 1. So now I have 2 cubed, which is 8 times 2, which is 16 thirds, minus 4 plus 8. Minus in brackets, we have a negative 2 thirds, a uh, minus 1, and a negative 4. So I get 16 thirds uh, minus a negative 2 thirds, which is actually now positive, so that's 18 thirds. I have a positive 4 on the outside. In here, I would have a negative 5, but it's minus a negative 5, so it would be positive 5 here. 18 over 3 is 6, so 6 plus 4 plus 5 is 15 units squared. So it says find the area trapped by the curves f of x equals x minus 4 and g of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared. So right now we know that one of those things is a line and one of those is a x cubed graph. So the x cubed graph g of x probably looks something like this and the x uh, the line f of x probably looks something like that. So we're trying to find the area trapped in between these two curves so we're looking for that area there and that area there. But we don't necessarily know where these points are yet, first off. So we need to find out where these points are, where these two um, shapes intersect. And then we need to determine if it actually looks like this. If 
the um, f or the g of x function here is on top, where the f of x is underneath, and then vice versa. So there's a few things we need to figure out. So first off, let's figure out where these two things intersect. Well, if we're looking at where f of x and g of x intersect, we're looking for where f of x is equal to g of x. So we get x minus 4 equaling x cubed minus 4x squared. So in order to solve this, we move everything to one side. So we get x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4. And now we need to factor that thing. So you could use synthetic division at this point, but I'm noticing that I have a 4 and a 4 here. So I'm going to try um, just taking out a greatest common factor and grouping. So out of these first two terms, I'm going to take out an x squared. And then I get x minus 4. Over here, I'm going to take out a negative 1 and I get x minus 4. So I have x squared minus 1 and x minus 4. So I have actually found the three spots where these two functions are equal to each other. Where f of x and g of x were equal to each other, that's at x equals 1, x equals negative 1, and at x equals 4. So now that I've found out where those, those two functions, f of x and g of x, are equal to each other, I need to find out which one's going to be on top. And so I have three x values. I have negative one, I have a one, and I have a four. So basically what I have here is two intervals. So I need to find out in this first interval which function is going to be on top of the other function. So I have f of x and I have g of x. So in order to do that, I'm just going to pick a number from this interval. I'm going to plug it into both f of x and g of x and find out exactly what the y value is. If the y value for f of x is higher than the y value for g of x, then I know that f of x is on top. And then vice versa, if the y value for g of x happens to be higher than the y value for f of x, I know g of x is on top. So what I'm trying to figure out here is when I go from 1 to negative 1, which function am I going to subtract from which function? And then I'm going to do the same thing from 4 to 1. I'm going to figure out which function I'm going to subtract from which function um, to find out that integral. So what I've got, I'm going to plug in a 0 because that's between negative 1 and 1. If I plug a 0 into f of x, I get negative 4. If I plug a 0 into g of x, I get 0. So since 0 is greater than negative 4, that means g of x is on top of f of x for this interval from negative 1 to 1. So I actually have the integral from negative 1 to 1 of g of x minus f of x. Then from 4 to 1, let's do the same thing. Let's plug in a value. I'm going to plug in a value of 2. If I plug in a value of 2 into f of x, I get 2 minus 4 which is negative 2. If I plug a value of 2 into g of x, I get uh, 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 4 times 2 squared, which is 16. And that means I get an answer of negative 8. So in this case, from 4 to 1, f of x has a higher y value than g of x. So we are going to have f of x minus g of x. And what we can do now is sub in those functions. So g of x happened to be x cubed minus 4x squared. I'm going to subtract f of x. So I'm going to subtract both of these terms. So that turns into a negative x and a positive 4. And then in this integral, I have 4 to 1 of f of x, which is x minus 4 minus g of x. So that's negative x cubed plus 4x squared and dx. So now that I've found out which function is on top, I can subtract those functions and now I can do the, take the integral and substitute in some numbers. So now that we've determined our two intervals and we've determined which function is on top, now we need to take the integral of it. So the integral of x cubed is 1 quarter x to the fourth. The integral of negative 4x squared would be negative 4 over 3x cubed. The integral of negative x is a negative half x squared. And the integral of 4 is positive 4x. And we're going to take that integral from 1 to negative 1. And over here, we have an integral, which is essentially the same terms, but with opposite signs. So we have uh, negative 1 quarter x to the fourth, positive 4 over 3x cubed, positive 1 half x squared, and negative 4x. And that integral we're going to take from 4 to 1. So you can see that it's going to be a lot of work because now we need to substitute in a value for 1 into this thing. And so I'm going to make that uh, this part in red. So I'm going to sub it in a value of 1. So I get 1 quarter times 1 to the 4th minus 4 thirds times 1 cubed minus 1 half times 1 squared plus 4 times 1. 
and then I have to subtract when, what I get when I plug in the negative one. So one quarter, negative one to the fourth, minus four over three, negative one cubed, minus a half, uh, negative one squared, plus four times negative one. So that, that gives me the value of um, when I plug in a one and I subtract what I plug in when I get a negative one. And when that's all said and done, I got an answer of 16 over three. Um, in the green type, I'm gonna figure out what I get when I plug in a four and then I subtract what I get when I plug in a one. So I get negative a quarter, four to the fourth power, plus four thirds, four cubed, plus a half, four squared minus four times four. Then I subtract this whole thing when I plug in a one. So negative quarter, one to the fourth, plus four thirds, one cubed, plus a half, one squared minus four times one. And when I did that, I found out that, that was 63 over four. And so now that I have the area from one to negative one, I have the area from four to one, I can add those two areas together and I get a final answer of 253 over 12 units squared. So, you so in summary, you need to be able to determine which function lies above the other in order to use the following concept, that um, the integral from b to a of f of x minus g of x dx, and that's when f of x is a function above and g of x is a function below, where f of x and g of x are two continuous functions and f of x lies above g of x on the interval a to b. You need to know the intervals in which you're trying to find the integral. And then you can pick a point from that interval, plug it into both functions to see which function lies above the other function. So your assignment is on pages uh, 384, just page 384, sorry. 1 to 4, 8 to 10, and 11 to 18. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.